In this video, we'll look at a piece of vintage test equipment, the Heathkit IG57A Television Post Marker Sweep Generator. In a previous YouTube video, which covered the Heathkit TS3 TV Alignment Generator, I gave some background information about signal generators and sweep and marker generators used for television servicing. Rather than repeating that information here, I refer you to that video if you want to know more about signal and sweep generators. The TS3 was made in the mid-1950s and was representative of servicing equipment for black and white televisions of that era. By the end of the 1960s, television in North America had evolved to add support for color and expanded from the original VHF channels 2 through 13 to add UHF channels 14 to 83. Television servicing equipment also evolved to support the new television technology. In this video, we'll look at the IG57A post marker sweep generator, a unit that was representative of this era. Heathkit was a manufacturer of electronics in kit form. Their product line included amateur radio, test equipment, and various consumer products. By building a piece of electronics, you could save money and gain the satisfaction of having assembled it yourself. Heathkit produced many models of signal generators of different types. They produced a number of sweep generators starting with the TS1 in 1950 and ending with the IG5257 in 1984. As compared to the TS3 described in my other YouTube video, the IG57A offers more features needed for servicing than current television receivers with support for color. It also supports features for FM radio. It's all solid state and as such has much more complex circuitry, being more densely packed on printed circuit boards. It has a more modern styling and color of case and controls and uses the newer BNC type connectors. Here's a description of the unit taken from the introduction section of the assembly manual. The Heathkit model IG57A TV post marker sweep generator is a solid state 15 crystal marker generator and electronic sweep generator for alignment of tune circuits in color or black and white TV sets and FM receivers. The post marker generator mixes one or more marker signals with the demodulated signal from the circuit being tested or aligned. The markers are sharp and well defined and will not alter or distort the response curve of the circuits involved. Therefore, the oscilloscope will show the actual wave shape of the circuit or device under test. As many as six markers can be made to appear simultaneously on an IF trace. This enables you to adjust the IF circuits for proper wave shape and bandwidth in much less time than would be possible if you were to use the old variable marker system, which must be reset and calibrated for each marker frequency. Markers are provided for color band pass alignment, picture and sound carrier frequencies for channels 4 and 10, FM tuner, FM IF and discriminator alignment, and television sound IF adjustments. Modulation at 400 Hz is provided for trap adjustment and for checking and adjusting FM tuners. Also provided are two variable voltage bias supplies which switch with switch selector to provide positive or negative voltages. The sweep generator has three linear sweep ranges. These ranges cover the sweep necessary for proper alignment of FM receivers and the TV turn suits, tune circuits in the sound IF, color band pass, and video IF circuits, and for proper overall RF IF response. The diode modulator combines the frequencies of the post marker and sweep generators to permit amplitude modulation of the picture carrier frequency by a low frequency sweep signal. This method of sweep alignment, called video sweep modulation, permits observation of the overall color bandpass response, including the effect of the video detector load circuitry. Other features include a blanking switch, trace reversing switch, and a phase control, so the markers will appear as shown in the waveforms in the set manufacturer's alignment instructions, regardless of the oscilloscope you use. All of these features combine to provide you with a versatile, accurate, and attractive test instrument that's designed for long and dependable service at minimum cost. The IG57A was offered from 1970 to 1978. The cost was $135 in 1971. 
and $164.95 in 1976. It was also available as a factory assembled version designated at various times as the IGW57, IG5327, and SG57A. The assembled version had a slightly different color styling and typically sold for about 50% more than the kit. The predecessor to the IG57A was the almost identical IG57 model. It was succeeded by the IG5257, which was electrically identical and made until 1984. Let's briefly run through the function of each of the controls and jacks. Starting with the rear panel, we have the blanking switch. This eliminates one trace and provides a base reference line in the on position. The switch must be in the off position for proper adjustment of the phase adjust control. The sweep output connector provides output signals from the sweep oscillators to the attenuator or directly to the television set. Trace reverse reverses the oscilloscope trace to present frequency markers in the proper sequence. The phase adjust control adjusts the phase of the horizontal input signal so both traces on the oscilloscope screen coincide. And here we have the AC input jack. Now we'll run through the controls and jacks on the front panel. The modulation switch provides a 400 Hz modulation of the marker signal at the marker out connector. The marker pip will not appear on the oscilloscope trace when this is turned on. The bias controls adjust the amount of bias voltage that appears at the bias binding posts. The bias switch selects positive or negative voltages applied to the bias 1 and bias 2 outputs. The bias binding posts provide connections for sources of the variable bias voltage. The external marker sweep connector allows the injection of an external sweep signal to be mixed with the marker oscillator signal or allows the injection of external markers not provided by the marker generator. The IF RF VSM jack provides video sweep modulated signal to be applied to the receiver under test. The trace input demodulator input connector allows the injection of a demodulated signal from the receiver under test. The marker control adjusts the amplitude of the marker which appears at the scope output. The trace control adjusts the amplitude of the demodulated signal that appears at the scope output. The sweep width control adjusts the sweep oscillator from minimum to maximum sweep frequency deviation. Clockwise rotation increases and counterclockwise rotation decreases the span of frequencies being swept. The sweep center control shifts the entire span of the swept frequency so the center point of the sweep may be set to the desired frequency. The marker switches provide 16 different switches to turn on and off the individual marker oscillators. The marker out adjusts the amplitude of the marker signal appearing at the marker out connector. The sweep range is an operative in the off position. Other switch positions provide correct sweep frequency for color band pass and FM IF, television IF, and VHF channel 4 and channel 10. The scope horizontal jacks connect to the oscilloscope horizontal input to provide controlled trace on the oscilloscope screen. The scope vertical provides a composite signal from the trace amplifier and the marker amplifier to the oscilloscope vertical input. Power switch turns the generator on and off, and the marker output provides a marker signal from the oscillator selected by the marker switches. Also provides 400 Hz modulation of the marker frequency when the modulation switch is on. The term post marker in the product name refers to the use of post injection marker circuitry where the markers are added to the sweep signal after the signal passes through the unit under test, making the marker pips cleaner and more visible. The alternative is pre-marker injection, which some sweep generators used and is considered an inferior design. Here's a diagram from the manual showing a typical setup for IF sweep and trap alignment of television circuitry. The unit consisted of the generator itself, as well as a separate attenuator box and four coaxial cables with test leads and demodulation probe. 
The manual has over 20 pages of applications, including procedures for aligning specific models of Heathkit televisions and generic procedures for television and FM radio alignment. The unit was quite a complex kit to build with approximately 65 pages of assembly instructions in the manual. Here's a look at the inside. Construction is on three printed circuit boards with additional point-to-point -point wiring and a significant number of mechanical parts. The unit employs 27 transistors and 8 diodes. It does not use any integrated circuits. The large circuit board contains the 15 crystal controlled marker oscillators. Inside a shielded compartment, the heart of the sweep generator is a controllable inductor, an electrical device in which the inductance of several oscillator coils is determined by the current in the control winding. Test and calibration of the unit requires a VTVM and oscilloscope, but no other instruments as it uses its own crystal oscillators for frequency calibration. On the underside you can see the bottom of the printed circuit boards and some more point-to-point -point wiring. Here we can see the sweep output of the generator going directly to the vertical input of an oscilloscope. We can see the RF signal that's being output which uh, goes to zero during the blanking interval which is when the oscilloscope trace would normally move from back from right to left. Now I've connected the oscilloscope through the RF demodulator probe which demodulates the RF from the signal from the sweep generator and converts it to a DC waveform corresponding to the envelope. So we see an outline of the areas where the signal is demodulated and again we see a zero during the blanking period. I now have a setup that's more representative of actual television alignment testing. The sweep output is going to the RF demodulator through a IF transformer which has a bandpass characteristic that we can examine. The filter is then going back into the trace input of the signal generator where any of the markers are added. And I've put the scope in XY mode using the scope horizontal and scope vertical outputs. So we're now seeing here uh, a sweep indicating the frequency response um, of the IF transformer which has a, a peak at a particular frequency. One of the adjustments that needs to be done is the phasing adjustment on the back and the easiest way to do that is to turn off blanking using the switch on the back and then adjust the two traces now so that they overlap and we have now proper phasing adjustment for the oscilloscope. So now if we adjust the center frequency of the sweep we can shift the frequencies that we're looking at uh, as we do the sweep, we can change the sweep width and change the range of frequencies that we're looking at and see a changing width of the peak through the IF transformer. We can now also turn on some markers. I'll turn on a 4.5 megahertz marker and we're seeing little pips on the display every 4.5 megahertz. We could also look at 10.7 megahertz for example. And as the sweep moves, the pips will stay at the same frequency. These pips are really useful for aligning particular characteristics of televisions and the frequencies are selected for commonly used frequencies for television and FM radio alignment. As a final example, I've connected an external RF signal generator to the external marker input to provide a, a variable frequency external marker. And turning that on, we can now see a marker pip that corresponds to the frequency of the external RF generator which we can vary by changing the vary the generator frequency so we could provide a mark at any frequency that we wanted. I obtained this unit on eBay it was being offered for a low price but was missing the cables and attenuator box. I was able to find a scan of the full manual on the internet. I made an RF detector cable using the circuit in the manual. I also have an attenuator box with similar features that can be used with the unit. 
No real restoration was needed. I gave it a thorough cleaning and check out and it seemed to be working fine. My new book, Classic Heathkit Electronic Test Equipment, covers Heathkit's test equipment products starting with a brief history of Heathkit, an overview of the test equipment product lines, and tips on buying and restoring vintage test equipment from sources like eBay. Separate chapters cover the major categories of component testers and substitution boxes, frequency counters, meters, oscilloscopes, power supplies, signal generators, tube testers and checkers, and miscellaneous test equipment. Each chapter includes one or more in-depth sections that looks at a representative model from my Heathkit collection covering its features, operation, and notable quirks or trivia. The appendix provides a list of references and resources, including books, websites, and suppliers of parts, manuals, and related products and services, as well as a detailed product listing of every known model of test equipment produced by Heathkit. The book is available from lulu.com and Amazon, and retails for $19.95 U.S. In summary, the IG57A is a good example of the type of sweep generator that was state-of-the-art in the early 1970s. It provided the features needed for television and FM radio alignment for receivers of the time and was offered for a price that was economical when compared to other commercial products. Heathkit claimed that the unit was used by thousands of technicians and servicemen. In conjunction with a VTVM and oscilloscope, it allowed one to align virtually any black and white or color television receiver on the market at the time. This equipment is now really only of interest to people who collect old test equipment or work on old television receivers. Modern TVs typically no longer require alignment, and analog television broadcasting has been phased out in most of North America and replaced by digital television. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please check out my other YouTube videos on vintage Heathkit radios and test equipment.